Hi, welcome to the Virtual Hub sessions. Today, I'm going to walk you through Do More With Amps in Teams session. My name is Laszlo Shomi. I'm a senior program manager on the Teams engineering team. Our session today, we are going to talk about common scenarios addressed by applications in Teams, identify suitable applications for your users in your organization, recognize common attributes of successful application deployment. We're going to talk about deployment of application environment and how to control those applications for your users. And we're going to talk a great deal about security and compliance considerations for Teams. Top four myths of using applications in Teams. These are the top four questions we're being asked all the time by customers when we're talking about Teams and applications. Allow third-party apps will create licensing headaches. Apps will access all my confidential files and conversations. Apps will access all my personal information and send spam. And it is inconvenient and messy to uninstall an application after setting it up. Let's start with the first. A lot of third-party apps will create licensing headaches. Majority of the applications used in Teams are free or leverage existing enterprise licenses. We want to focus on line of business applications your users are already using and make sure you allow that in Teams for these users. Application will access all my confidential files and conversation. Application can only access files that you explicitly send to that service. And they can only read messages when the app is explicitly mentioned in a message. So in a Teams and channel construct, are you conversing with a bot? The bot will only see messages and files which you send to it. Apps will access all my personal information and send spam. Application developers get access to very basic personal information about the user who is logging into their service. They have to be able to identify that user. But sending any sort of spam violates our application store policies and we result the application to be taken down. It is inconvenient and messy to uninstall an app after setting it up. Users can uninstall an app personally with two clicks and administrators can control an application for a user with two clicks. I will show you in the policies how it's done. So in today's workshop, we're going to focus on a what, how, and why to learn about applications in Teams. and going to focus on security compliance and policies to manage those applications in our environment. Let's look at the backgrounds of applications. You should be familiar with the core workloads of Teams, chat, meetings, and calling capabilities. This is how we communicate within our environment. We've been using Office 365 applications, both with Teams and, and historically with Skype for Business, to collaborate. We can collaborate in various file types. We can uh, co-author documents. We can share documents, files internally and externally to the organization. And it's a great work better together story using these powerful productivity tools. Now let's look at this extensible platform value proposition. On the center of it, we communicate, chat, meetings, and calling internally and externally to our organization. We collaborate using all these file types as parts of Office 365 ecosystem. And we extend on that, do more, with this close to 500 applications, third-party applications available in Teams. And this is how we get more work done by connecting all your systems and processes. The application you're using can appear in a team and channel construct right when it is needed. When you're collaborating with people, you can mention an application contact cards appears. You will see, I will demonstrate this for you as we go along. But the concept here is that we're using these applications in context of where they are needed right within Teams. And if the user is already using a line of business application within your organization, they should be able to use it in Teams as well. 
No need to contact switch, leave the application, go to a browser or desktop application. If there is an application add-in for Teams, it should be allowed for the users to use. Now let's look at the types of application we have in Teams. We start out with the first party Microsoft applications. These are Microsoft developed applications, parts of Office 365 ecosystem, and there are about 45 of them. Third party applications, which our partners have developed for Teams, there are close to 500 of them by now. Anything from Salesforce to SurveyMonkey to Asana GitHub, all those entities, Trello, I think that's the icon for it, uh, I will demonstrate later. And there are custom applications an organization could develop. Unlimited possibilities, doing processes, productivity, employee services, approvals, and workflows. And how these custom applications are built, you can use the Microsoft Power Platform. These are low-code, no-code solution using the Power tools we have. Power BI for dashboarding capabilities, Power Apps for drag and drop, building applications for the enterprise, and Power Automate to automating workflows in the environment. You respond to an event, something needs to happen, notifications, and so on. You can automate this with Power Automate. We also provide application template. You can access them at AKAMS Teams app templates. I will mention this later in the presentation. There are about 20 of them. The most popular is Company Communicator and FAQ+. Every organization has an FAQ somewhere in the environment. It can be HR, it can be IT related. Wouldn't it be nice that users who are using Teams can interact with these bots, with these applications, these FAQs in a bot format? I ask questions, I get answers. I need to get some help with some drivers for my laptop. IT FAQ can help me locating those. I can ask an HR bot about uh, tax information, modifying, how to update my address type of information. Whatever the, is the contents of that FAQ you control and provide for these applications. Again, there are about 20 of them published in GitHub today. You can experiment. These are also low-code, no-code type of solution. We have published these templates for you to use. Or you could build an application from scratch using bots, tabs, message extensions. You can use Microsoft Graph, Identity Framework, and build all sorts of applications required in your line of business. An application can be published to the store. You are an, an organization who develop applications for customers. You could publish that application to our Microsoft Store, and all customers can take advantage of it. You could write an application just for your tenant and publish it for your organization. Application template would be a good example of that. You can publish an application to a team for testing purposes or for specific functions. A group of users need to have access to a specific application. You give them access. Let's talk about discovering these applications. So this is the Teams client we're looking at here. I can access the application from the left rail. I can look at the type of applications here, personal app, bots, tabs, connectors, or messages extensions. We will talk about those shortly. I can look at the categories of applications for organized conveniently for everybody. In each of these little tabs, you get information about the what is the application, who is the application provider, Polly in this case, you see for forms, it's Microsoft Corporation. You get a little blurb, what does this application do? And you can install the application from here. We will talk about installation uh, shortly. But let's look at the extensibility point that the capabilities of these applications have. Let's start with bots, which helps users get tasks done in a conversational manner. So I'm in a Teams client in, a, in my chat window, and I start a conversation with a bot. I can ask the bot, what are my tasks for today? 
and the bot looks at all the all the task list I have access to and gives me a list of tasks assigned to me uh, for today. Very simple conversational item. I get the information to the user as they need. An application can appear in a team and channel construct as a pinned application. This is the largest Canvas application we have. So an application which requires a large Canvas, this is where you would surface it. And I will demonstrate this also. Or an application can show up. Again, we are still in a Teams and channel construct, but we are under conversations as a message extension. In the context as I'm writing the message, I can bring up information from that application. You are sending some information or asking feedback from a, a partner of yours in that Teams and in that team and channel. They immediately get the context of what you're talking about because the application will insert the relevant information. I will also demonstrate this shortly. Extensibility points. And an application can appear in your activity feed. It can send you messages when something happens or something requires your attention, just like any other uh, activity notifications. We can talk about adaptive cars. So again, we are in a Teams and Channel construct. I'm having a conversation with um, my coworkers and I'm bringing the information in that is relevant for that conversation and they can act upon it right there. No need to copy a link, go outside to a browser to authenticate to another uh, on another tab uh, and act on that message. It's writing context and the, con and the work gets done. Or an application can have a personal scope. This is a planner application which displays me all the planner plans within my organizations uh, I have access to and I, uh, I am on. Again, I, it can be personal in scope. So application scope again, teams and channels where they can appear. It could be a chat application or it could be a user-centric personal application. I use that application myself. I build my own team and channel, so I don't have to leave Teams and I can uh, use my line of business application I need to access at my fingertips. So all these immersive experiences, tabs, bots, message extension, adaptive cars and activity feeds, all built on the Microsoft backend platform. So Microsoft Graph, which is our identity layer, you may integrate with your line of business applications, either you own and manage. You can also build applications on Microsoft AI, conversations with intelligence, pre-built and custom models. You can analyze data and get, uh, get that right into your application in Teams. All right, this reminds me of demo time. I'm going to show you an application called Trello, and I'm going to show you that same applications and various aspects of it in a large canvas view, in a bot experience, and a message extension. All right, so let's start this. And let's go to my application. So I am in a team and channels. I launched my team client. Uh, I'm going to navigate to my offsite planning section. And in my offsite planning, I have a pinned application for Trello. I already authenticated to this application. And this Trello application will bring up this board, which helps me organize this event we are talking about. So it's conference planning for this 2020 event to do, doing, and done. Very simple. I can drag and drop between um, the various columns. I can edit them. Oh, I just go back to it. I can assign labels. I can add members, due date. I can uh, change colors of it. Get the idea. It's a task management 
in these various buckets I have. I can look at it in calendar format and then um, in a menu format as well. I can interact with the same application as a bot. So I go over to the chat context. I have my Trello application there and I can ask this application questions. Search the venues. The bot goes out, looks through its base, and gets me the information I need. Close on conference venue, conference planning 2020, right where I was just a second ago. Clicking on it will also give me more information. I can change the due date, add labels, assign it to myself, archive it or move it to another board. Again, it's in a conversational fashion in, with a bot I can interact with. Going back into a Teams and channel to this offsite planning, and I can look at posts where conversation happen within that channel, I can use a message extension. A message extension, admittedly, we went a little overboard here with all these applications added here, but I can interact with Trello right here. And I can search for those venues. Bringing that venue up, bringing that card into that conversation. And I can start mentioning Adele here. Can you help me with this item? Oops. So when Adele gets this message, they have a context of what I am asking about immediately. They can act on it right there. Uh, they can help me with it. No, not leaving the context of the team and channel, go to a web browser or a desktop application to act on that uh, request I had to them. So in this quick one minute, two minute, I, ins uh, I showed you how to interact with that same application in posts, in the canvas area, or using it as a bot. Very straightforward how I can interact with them. So now we know about how to discover applications. We know about the areas and scopes that message uh, can have and capabilities. Now let's talk about managing these applications. We are in the Teams Admin Center and we have a dedicated section here for managing these applications. Managing the applications, I get a list of all applications available for my users. I can also control them, blocked and allowed. I can also see if they are custom applications or not. I can look at the certifications of this application. Publisher attestation, certification we have for that particular application. So I can find out more about the application and its capabilities. You can also control the applications organization wide. I consider this a very heavy handed approach to control applications. It's a very allow or deny type of way. I much prefer to use permission policies to control applications, what is available for my users. And it leaves me enough room that I can experiment and test out applications I may want my users to use in the future. So publisher attestation, its developer provided security and data across 90 vectors in a consistent format in a single location. You will be able to look at this information. I will give you the link where all this application information is stored and you can analyze it for your organization. We can build trust further by certifying an application. And there are some applications which are certified by Microsoft. We're going a bit further. We do pen testing, checking application security. We look at op operational security of the application patching, malware management, vulnerability scans, risk management items. We look at data handling and security and privacy for that particular application. We also look at the compliance claim checks that application may have. So let's look at an actual application. 
it's the ADP virtual assistant, uh, HR and payroll provider applications. The link to access all this information is at AKMS Teams app certification. So under general information, we get some information about the organization who wrote the app, and we also see here what capabilities this application have. We can also look at some security aspects of it, how data is handled. I'm very curious about how this organization um, doing audit trails. And here I can confirm that admin, user, and data audit trails exist for this application. So I can have some confidence of how the data is handled, and we can always go back and look at how things happened. Uh, from this application's point of view. We verify certificate, of course, and we look at compliance features. What certifications this application have? Your security and HR folks might be very interested in this. Permission policies, controls what applications are available to individuals or groups of users. And I prefer to control applications in an organization this way. There is always a global policy which applies to the users, or I can create custom policies. And a policy controls what applications a user will see. And looking at from the global policy point of view, any policy you custom create have these choices. And the categories are Microsoft apps, third-party apps, and tenant applications. And the capabilities are allow all allow specific block others, block specific allow others, or block all applications of a certain type. This is a much easier way to control applications for a user. For example, there is this sales team permission policy. We allow Microsoft Office 365 applications for these users, great. But on third-party application pane, we only allow them these four applications, Adobe Sign in, Salesforce, Freshdesk, and Asana. I may find out they may use these applications on a day-to-day -day basis in the line of business, so why not giving them in Teams as well? Then I can manage the users and add them to this list. That's it. You create a, created an application permission policy, you assigned it to the users, and those are the applications they will have access to. Policy precedents. First, we start with an org-wide application settings, as I mentioned, as the top level, most heavy-handed approach to do it. Custom permission policies, how you control what applications a user have access to. And that is the global or the default permission policy. Last but not least, that applies to the user. There are no other policy specifically applies to them. Let's look at setup policies quickly. So we control the applications with permission policies my users have access to. With setup policies, I can surface those applications to be more visible for my users right on the left rail of the system. So in an example here, we add to a policy the now virtual agent. And when the user logs in to Teams, this application appear to them. They don't need to install anything on their desktop via web or their mobile device. Just by assigning this application to them, it will appear on all their devices they log into Teams with. Another example here, Adobe Sign-In and Seismic pinned to the left rail for the user. It appears to them on the mobile device based on real estate, uh, it goes to the overflow for the users if it doesn't fit on the screen. So this dot, dot, dot more here. But you get the idea. I assign the policy to the users, they get the application, and it appears to them in their client without installing anything else. They have access to it and they can utilize it. As an IT pro, in the Teams Admin Center, we surfaced under usage reports, application usage, in the date range, and I can look at what applications my users are using. Let's say you have the default policy where all applications are enabled and allowed for the user. I can look at what they have installed, what type of application it is, the user activity, how many users are using it, and how many active teams are using it, and I can drill down a little further after that. 
So I do get some reports, which I can also uh, download and analyze uh, in Excel. Let's talk about compliance. Um, our chief architect has released a blog, which uh, I will link you uh, in a slide or two, which talks about how the capabilities you deploy, what application has these capabilities, how does the data handled by that application? For example, bots only receive messages which they are explicitly mentioned by users. This data can and does leave the corporate network. Bot can retrieve and might store a list of channels in a team. And this data also leaves the network. The bot needs to know where it's installed in an organization in the team's channel construct. When using connectors, no data leaves the corporate network. So all the connector does is post messages to a channel and no data leaves the network. When using an application in a tab, so you pin a tab, just as I showed you with Trello, the risk profile is similar to what a web application have. So running that same application in a web browser, you authenticate to the application, you know the application knows who you are, so it gets your UPN of the current user and the Azure AD object ID of the current user and the Office 365 group in which it resides, if it's a team, of course. The tenant ID of the current user, so all information an application can, can see. AKMS, Teams app permissions, is where this blog is located. And I recommend that all IT Pro take a look at this and consume it. It is not uh, that long, but it is one of the best articles out there explaining how these capabilities handling data uh, in our environment. Let's look at an application. This is Asana productivity workflow plus business management application. Before I install the application, I can look at what its capabilities are. It works as a tab and a bot and a message extension. I need to understand how my users are uh, going to use this. I can also look at the permissions this application requires to operate. Very straightforward, right up front, all the information is there. You can review it and analyze it. Let's go a bit further. I can look at, in my Azure Active Directory, what are the applications my users are using in our environment. So let's get back to my test tenant here. And I'm going to go to the Teams Admin Center, and I'm going to go to Azure Active Directory. I can look at the enterprise applications which are allowed in my organization. So I can filter it to all the enabled applications in my organizations, what a user can use. There's quite a long list here before this test tenant, of course. And I can also look at sign-ins. And sign-ins is the way I can find out what applications in Azure Active Directory my users are using organization-wide. I can also download this information. This is a test tenant. I am logged in as Megan here. You will see all the actions I had where the connectivity came from and what the user has authenticated to. I'm using the Teams Admin Center and I authenticated on Megan, of course. You can see Atlassian, which is used by Trello as the authentication and all the other information. You can download this, analyze this for all your users and you can get some ideas. What we want to ensure here that if a user is using a line of business application on a daily basis, that we don't block that application for them in Teams and might as well help them and pin that application for them so they can take advantage of it. Let's go back to the presentation. So we want to make sure the applications are available in Teams, which the user might be already using. 
Now, let's talk about if I were an IT administrator, how I would think about enabling an application for my organization. First, I would look at the architecture of the application, privacy, security, compliance features within Teams what enabled for this application. Then I can look at what the application can do, bots, tabs, message extensions. I can also analyze the scope where this application can be installed, Teams, channels, chat, personal context, or look at the application permission this application requires to operate. I can look at what we know about the developer, what security and compliance standards do they meet? Have they already been through an internal approver? I can look at that via Azure AD. And I can talk to procurement and InfoSec about that application to be allowed for the users to be used in Teams. And last but not least, I can look at the organization-wide, what, what applications my users are using and focus on those applications to enable them, uh, the users uh, in Teams. All right, where do we go from here? So today we talked about common scenarios addressed by applications in Teams. We talked about considerations for enabling Teams for your users. Talked about deploying these applications in Teams and we spent quite a bit of time on security and compliance. This was an abbreviated version of a longer session we deliver as parts of the Teams Chalk Talk series, which you can access at https aka.ms slash Teams Chalk Talks. We cover application topics as well as other technical items, um, deliver them multiple times a week. And if you have any feedback you would like to share with us as it relates to this session, please send an email to teamsit at microsoft.com is come directly to my group and we monitor that uh, regularly. I want to thank you for coming and watching this session today. And I hope you're enjoying your virtual hub experience. Thank you very much for coming.